case I didn't actually do it earlier, welcome to January's reading vlog. And we shall insert first clip now and then jump back to today. Like this, maybe, hello, I don't know. I don't know if this is working at all. But you know, I should probably start the reading vlog if I'm gonna do a reading vlog like I said it was. Because I started Threads That Bind and you know, I'm really having confusion right now and I need to rewatch the TBR because I really think I said Threads of Power. But I, at the same point, I also think I said Threads That Bind. Will this be the intro? I don't know. Maybe. I have no idea what's happening. Lighting, anything. My finger's on the screen. I don't think that does anything. I updated the Discord though in like my first thoughts, one through four. And then the next thing was immediately, the thing I was asking was immediately answered in chapter five. And I'm like, besides meeting our main characters, Io, who is a Moria-born descendant of fate, as the third of the three sisters, she is the cutter which uh, the first sister can weave threads. The middle sister can stretch them. Yeah, I said in there, crap. And Io can cut them. So she can sever people's threads, like any, any thread. Like she admits that she helps people with addictions. So she can cuts their connection to those addictions that they love. She is also a private investigator of undetermined age. It is a YA book, but I don't know how old she is. And um, apparently she has known the boy she's fated to be with for very many years and just adamantly avoided him. Not because she didn't want to be with him so much as she didn't want to force him to be with her. Like, cause when she first found out about him, he apparently had another girlfriend. So she was just giving him free will and stuff, which that's cool but it's probably not still with said person. They were like teenagers or like younger teenagers. I think it's a 13. Uh, the first murder took place like within the first chapter and she's already on the case for the mob queen. The mob queen has hired her out to investigate who is killing these peoples and how because the murderer person has a severed life thread. So they should be dead, but they're not. And they're going around and killing other Moria born people, which was the thing I had the question about. Because they called them other born and Moria born. And at first I thought Moria born was just for the fates, the, like Io. But no, it means any descendant of the Moria, which were the godlike beings that are gone now, but their genetics passed down through the lines. They live in city states, and it's not just this city state particularly, it seems to be there are different sorts of gods in different places. And they're all walled off from each other too. So that's kind of cool. And that's interesting as to what in the world is going on there. But yeah, big mystery. Interesting, interesting connections being made. So far, this is intriguing. And as long as it keeps going well, I will pick up the second one when it comes out in June. This is changing from just the book club book vlog to just we're going to do a reading vlog this month. Also, and the reason for this is because I did do the footage for a little bit, but I was like, I'm reading this in two to three days. Why? And I didn't record hardly anything. And then, so this book, I went from, it took me a, sec, a few chapters to like be like, oh, okay, I like it. I like it. To by the midway point, I was like, oh my gosh, it could be a four stars to, I think it ended at a 3.5 stars. Mostly because of our main character just wasn't making great decisions. I do, I mean, she's like 17 or 18, I realized by the end, so there is that. But if you're supposed to be a private investigator, how are you pretty good at your job if you're gonna tell everyone things? And it's not that she revealed it, like partially investigation to everybody. It just happened that the few people that she did also though, let's not, keep confronting our main suspects that we jump to conclusion of you're you're the one who's doing it without solid evidence and without the full solid evidence or picture you're like you did it straight to their face so yeah i'll i'll still pick up the next one and see where it's going because i really don't get the decision made there at the end to do that and then i kind of started uh the the book of love i think kelly link i think i've only made it to page 40 and i'm like I'm so confused. This is so weird. And I wanted to start Empire of Silence. I did. I was like, that was the next one I really planned on starting. 
but I was like, oh, I need to do the Children of Time review, which is science fiction. Let's not read another science fiction until we finish the review for that. That's where our brain is focused. We're not mixing up our sciencey, spacey facts. How I could, don't ask me. This is just my thought process. And then I didn't get that film to today. Another bad thought entered my brain of House of Flame and Shadow comes out on the 30th and you know, you could watch somebody's catch-up videos of it, you know, be ready to start and you could actually start it by the end of the month. Or you could try to listen to other, both the other books since you're, you can't start Empire of Silence yet and you've already read it. It wouldn't affect your review of the other books if you re-listen to House of Earth and Blood. So I'm almost done listening to that. Okay, we will be back once we can actually start Empire of Silence. And I think also in this reading vlog, we will show the bookcase of shame at the moment because right now it's a mess and we need to fix the mess. Yeah, I am cutting off the top of my head a little bit and the lighting isn't great, but I did say that I would show the horrible state of the actual bookcase. I'm sorry, you can probably hear the dryer going, but it's mostly going to speed up this clip and maybe I talk over it a bit uh, as I show the state of things. And we're going to, we're going to reorganize this today. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Somehow, I don't think I have enough room actually for all the things. I have another table that I am going to try to incorporate into this that originally was supposed to have another purpose, but it's just been sitting here. So it's uh, used for this now. Let's go. Yep, this is my mess. All the ones that I have listed for sale. Um, all the ones that have not been put away yet. <sighs> yep. And uh, there goes the gimbal because the cat knocked it off and now it does this. She knocked it down and now one of the locks do not actually lock anymore. So brilliant me, I recorded you know before and some during and then uh, I did not show you an after. We rang, changed to where like the YAs are more up there and then our big fantasies and um, some more like urban-y almost fantasies into kind of the romanticies and then into sci-fi. I don't know why I made that decision. I really don't but I have like a whole shelf of like fantasy fantasies and you know. Um, more YA to the middle grade, and then my son's books. Which if, you know, I could finish his shelf after we redid the closet, then, you know, I'd have a whole other layer. Because I forgot to include space for January's TBR books. And I don't know where they're going to go right now. I do not. I do have my other table cleaned off, but they're containing, um, uh, these. Which I did film something, but I don't know if I like how it turned out. And I think I'll just turn it into a short. So yes, that, that's how it's looking right now. And still don't know why I decided to do the fantasy. I mean, the sci-fi right next to the romanticy. Seems like a bad decision. Yay for redoing the shelves again very, very soon. Editing me here. Um, there was no clips for my reactions to Empire of Silence while I was reading it. I don't know what happened to them. I have put a memory card somewhere that I don't know where it is. Was something on there? Highly unlikely, because I was normally used for something else. But it could have been. And I know everything on here. I double-checked it to make sure I had it all on the computer. And yet, no clip. Did I not record anything? I don't remember doing that, but I guess it's a possibility. Okay, so there's that. There's that. Um, I'm very sorry. You can see the review here. 4.5 stars. It was definitely the best book of the month. Was there issues at the beginning? Sure. Took a minute. Styling-wise and everything and pacing-wise, sure. But the epic scale we're getting to. The epic scale we're getting to. I, yes, love the book. Will it keep getting better is the big question. Everyone says it does. So yeah, 
let's insert this clip. I don't know exactly where. Before the bookshelf thing? After the bookshelf thing? I feel like the bookshelf thing goes right there, though, really good, because what I said in the clip before I put the bookshelf thing. You'll find out in a minute, I guess. What was I supposed to be doing in this clip? Oh, um, I think hmm, I think it was telling you about the book I finished, which was The Tainted Cup by Robert Jackson Bennett. I haven't decided yet about how, if I want to do a review video for this, because it is supposed to be a mystery book, but it is different. Or no, it's supposed to be a fantasy with a hint of mystery. And it does read, it does read like a detective story, which our main character, Cole, is a detective. And you're following him, and from his description, I thought we were following two characters, but um, let's not focus on that too much, because this is just supposed to be a quick update for the wrap-up, right? And it was very interesting, though. I did, it, hmm. it makes me think, should I have really read a Sherlock Holmes novel before this? Because, oddly, I haven't, I don't think. I don't think. Have I? Not the point. But I also haven't read any of his other works, so I have not read Foundry Side. Thus, I don't have this comparison of, is this just his writing style, or did he change it to be in the style of the older who uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle? Like, did he change his formatting? Pro I mean, yes, the formatting, but like his style of wording and stuff just to make it feel more like that, because it definitely... It did. And it was impressive. So that's why I'm not sure about that. Somebody who's read the Foundry Side would have to let me know how that one went. The concept of it, though, it was very interesting because you are in this fair fantasy world and setting, but you don't really have a magic setting and you don't get... It's not too heavy fantasy. It's just you're in another world. And so all the rules are different. All of their advancements, even though they're not a highly advanced, they are kind of like late 1800s, early 1900s us advancement because there's carriages that I do believe were powered uh, by something. I don't think they were horse drawn, but they do still mostly ride horses. And so it is a very, very interesting setup and what they're going against. And oh my God, the description of the Leviathan. Should I do a review? Because I don't want to make this part too long and I don't want to go too much into it but pretty much Cole is an assistant investigator he's the assistant to the new investigator of their canton which is Anna Dobrov and she is supposed to be the Sherlock type character she has an amazing brain and mental processes but he's her assistant because Anna is quite quirky she won't leave her house she doesn't she goes around blindfolded most of the time because she wants to vague most of her senses sorry I don't know if that was a child or something outside. I don't know. But she wants to veil most of her senses to really be able to hone in on something. Like at one point, she locks herself in her giant trunk. Well, not locks, but she closes herself in her giant trunk to think. She's like, this is, I close myself off from everything and then I can concentrate on the problem. And just the way she comes up with things and like Cole's hiding something like really big through the whole novel. And when he finally gets it off his chest to Anna, she's like, how stupid do you think I am, boy? I've always known that. And he's like, really? Which what he's hiding, though, it's and it's even kind of explained a little bit like that. This isn't just a him problem, but it's something that's so minuscule that he has to feel. Well, it's not minuscule, not to diminish anybody who would have this issue. And I think my own daughter might have this issue, but it's not minuscule in that, but it's like in just the overall scope of how smart he is and how he's amazing in other aspects. But he lets this one thing feel like horrible. He's done something horrible. He's lying to everybody by not revealing this one thing. But I'm getting sidetracked. Uh, they are on an investigation, though, for a case that is unlike anything that people have seen before because an officer 
has all of a sudden turned into a tree in a very rich person's house. And so they are investigating the crime of how this high up office, uh, moderately high up officer, turned into a tree. And this is probably going to be the first in a series. I don't know how long the series is right now. I don't remember if it was said to be a trilogy, but it's a very interesting one. And while it's not one that I'm going to have, oh, I need to read the next one. I think I would be happy to pick up the next one at in the future point when it does come out because it is engaging enough. And there was a certain thing in it that I feel like might come back around simply because of how unsettling it was. And I, I don't know. Also, Deaths, deaths can be quite graphic in this book, so be be prepared for that. Maybe I've done better with my in-between book talking cuts for this wrap-up vlog of entertaining things. Let me know in the comments if, if this vlog worked was entertaining. I want to make my vlogs entertaining for you guys. I do. I would like you guys to like the vlogs and do better at the vlogs, even though this is like a month-long wrap-up type vlog. It is different in nature on its own. I also have no idea how long I should be making these. I'm very sorry if you can hear the giggling in the other room. He's playing Gorilla Tag, I think, on the meta. So at least he's not making funny, funny noises right now. So we will update as soon as maybe we get another book finished. Yeah. Okay. broke out my romantic -y cup for starting Crescent City today, but we're not here to talk about that because I will definitely not be finishing that in January. Two days is not enough for the chunker and to do video stuff. I'm just not. Okay, moving on though. So, last night, finished Silver in the Bone by Alexandra Bracken. I did it, which I will say that the last parts of it did pick up quite a lot, quite a lot, but up until that point, it was a struggle. And like I said in the Discord, I figured out why, though I didn't like it. It was so hard. It's just Tansen. It was the main character the whole time. She was just an irritation. She has a fatalistic attitude towards everything, which, true, she was very traumatized as a child. She lives in constant terror all the time. So, I mean, I get that, but oh my gosh. It was just, the way she's written, it was just so, so irritating. I couldn't, oh, I disliked her so much. Okay. But Tamsin is our main character. She is a hollower, even though she cannot sense magic, see magic, has no magic. Only sorcerers, sorceresses, sorceresses have magic in this urban fantasy of our world. And other hollowers, though, generally have something called the One Vision, which does allow them to see the magic. In this way, they can go tomb raid, I mean, recover magical artifacts, normally for other sorceresses or just to, you know, make money. So that's what their whole guild does. When Tamsin, though, is looking for something that will cure her brother's curse and comes across information that her guardian, who disappeared seven-ish years before, might have been on the trail of something very, very important. And she kind of gets hired by this sorceress, kind of butts her way into getting hired by this sorceress, to find something called the Ring of Dispel, which would cure her brother's curse. However, Emerus Dai, her rival and enemy, kind of. Of course, there's a hot enemy, though. Uh, butts in, because he was actually being hired by that sorceress. And so he will not leave her side. He tracks her to Tent Tentigel. Tentigel? Tentigel. I can't say that. Where Arthur Arthur's castle was. Nope. Arthur was born there. Yes. Tentigel. Oh, my gosh. I can do this. He follows her there events unfold and they end up in Avalon and that's where most of the story takes place and that was not in the description at all but yes this is does deal with the King Arthur legend and Avalon and magic and sorceresses druids and the like so awesome bones for a story they have library cats though at the Hollowers Guild they have library cats that will keep the bad curses from trying to get out of containment the cats like Will this, will this spell or attack the curses? It's so funny. Uh, yes. Okay. That was adorable. I just have to tell you that. Hello, me again, just because it is the end of January now. And so I'm going to mention about Crescent City. No, I still haven't finished it, but I wanted to say a warning because PSA, whatever you want to call it, non-spoiler, don't worry. But if you're doing like a reread, like I did, 
I would say throw in a quarter silver flames because just some things are mentioned that I was very confused about. Uh, mostly names, but um, also deeds, I guess. So, yeah, you know, if you just want a refresher to remember everything, maybe throw in at least the last half of that book. Also, I have a really big question now, and um, I can't say anything about it because it's not even, it's not really, it might be a spoiler, I don't know. But because I can't say anything about it because we're not supposed to talk about this until everybody has had a chance, you know, at least try to read it, right? Yep. All right. Now, back to the rest of the video. The end of the video. Back to the end of the video. This will probably be the last update for the January reading vlog wrap up wrap up vlog whatever we're gonna call this i hope though that it was enjoyable and it came together okay i keep saying that i said that about the last one too i just i really would like this idea project to work and instead of just like the same old wrap ups every month sometimes we just do a reading vlog wrap up through the month and then you can check the other like if you want more information on some of the books you can check the what do they call it? Reviews. In the dedicated reviews that I might do for those books. I mean, yes, I don't do them for every book, of course, but you know. So I hope some of you will like this, enjoy this, and that we can uh, keep this going. It's so close, though, to that sub goal that I set myself in my head for January. I was like, this would be awesome if we can reach this by the end of the month. And we're so close, guys. And thank you guys so much to everybody who has already subscribed. And if you haven't, and you stayed till the end, and you like this, let me know in the comments and subscribe. Thank you all so much for being here though. And I love you guys. I hope you're finding something awesome to read today. 